Number 37. Determine the empirical formulas for compounds with the following percent compositions. And then we have letter B. So in this case, we have to come up with an empirical formula with percents of 40% uh, percent carbon, 6.7% hydrogen, and 53.3% oxygen. Okay, this might look scary at first, right? All they gave us was a percentage and they're asking for an empirical formula. Now just remember, an empirical formula is the, the most simplified formula out there. So what we're doing is we're just finding out a formula with these percents that will get us the most simplified formula. Okay, there's an easy four step process. If you guys memorize these steps, you guys should be good. And they're right here. Let me just make this maybe a little bit smaller. Let's put this up here because I'm dealing with three elements now. So I kind of want to have enough room for three elements. But here is the four step problem or the four step framework to go from a percent all the way to your empirical formula. So let's start from the left and work our way all the way to the right. The first thing you're going to do is, you know, obviously we got to start with those percentages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just rewrite each individual percent over here. So I'm just going to break them up. I'm going to say that I have 40.0% carbon. I have 6.7% hydrogen. And then I have 53.3% oxygen. Now, in order to make sure that we have all the elements that we need, the total percentage should add up to 100%. And if we do calculate this, it should come up to 100%, which means that we have all, you know, all the elements that are accounted for. Now, how are we going to turn this percent into grams? Well, we can do a little bit of an assumption here. We can say that if we have 100%, we can basically assume that if the total percentage is 100, we can assume that whatever the sample was of, you know, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, it's going to be the same as a total of 100 gram sample. So if I have a total amount of 100 grams, and this was the total percentage of 100, the first step is that the percent actually equals the grams. That's pretty easy. <laughs> all because we're basing off of the 100% equals the 100 gram total sample. So this 40.0% carbon, I now have 40.0 grams of carbon. 6.7% hydrogen, I got 6.7 grams of hydrogen. And then 53.3% oxygen, I now have 53.3 grams of oxygen. Okay, first step is done, three more to go. Now I have to go from grams to moles. This is a conversion. So we've, we've definitely seen these before. If you guys are on the playlist, you can find out our molar mass conversions. There's tons of them. Um, in this case, we have to go down to the periodic table. So I put what I see on my periodic table down here. Uh, your mass numbers might be a little bit different. Uh, because different periodic tables round differently, but the answers should relatively be the same. So remember, with any conversion, and I'll start with the top one first, we always want to multiply by a ratio. And in this case, the unit that you don't want goes on the, the opposite side. So in this case, it's going to go on the bottom. And the unit that you do want goes on the top. So grams on the bottom and mole of carbon on the top. So we could do the same thing for this setup. We don't want grams of hydrogen. That goes on the bottom. And we want mole of hydrogen. That goes on the top. The same thing for the grams of oxygen. I don't want grams of oxygen. That goes on the bottom. And I want mole of oxygen. That goes on the top. But now what are the numbers that go here, here, and here, right, on the top. And what are the numbers that go on the bottom? 
Well, those are the numbers coming from the periodic table. Now, just know that these mass numbers correspond to the grams that you have. These will always equal one mole of the element that you have. So anytime that you see a mole and you're converting from grams to moles, the moles are always one. You have one mole of carbon. You have one mole of hydrogen. You have one mole of oxygen. The numbers corresponds to their gram value. So for carbon, it's going to be 12... 0 0.01 grams of carbon. And maybe I'll put this in maybe a different color. So 12.01 grams of carbon. Hydrogen, 1.008 grams of hydrogen. And for the oxygen, it's 16.00. Now, grams of carbon cancels out with grams of carbon. Grams of hydrogen cancels out with grams of hydrogen. Grams of oxygen cancels out with grams of oxygen. And you're only left with those mole units. So we're getting somewhere. Now we just have to do the math. Okay, so let's let's get to it. Remember, these numbers are on the on the de bottom. <laughs> that was <laughs> that was a combination of denominator and bottom. De bottom. Good job, Christina. <laughs> anyway, if a number is on the denominator, DD, denominator divide. So we're going to do 40 divided by 12.01. I'm going to extend to a few decimal places. So 3.331 moles of carbon. 6.7 divided by 1.008. I get 6.647 6 .6 moles of hydrogen. And then 53.3 .3 divided by 16. I get 3.331 mole of oxygen. Okay. Maybe I'll just say moles, moles. Okay. Now this part is done. Halfway there, guys. Now how do we go from a mole to a mole ratio? Well, remember, whenever we get an empirical formula, we always divide by the lowest similar number. But the key word here is lowest. So whenever you want to get a ratio from your moles, you see how you have these like decimal values? We want nice whole numbers. So all you have to do is just analyze the ones that you have and divide by the lowest number of moles. So I have 3.331, 6.647, and 3.331. These numbers are the lowest, 3.331 and 3.331. So I'm going to divide each one, you got to be fair, by 3.331. And now I should come out with some nice whole numbers. Let's see. These cancel, right? This equals now one mole of carbon, 6.647 divided by 3.331, I do get a decimal. I get like 1.995, blah, 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 right? But this number is really, 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 really close to two. So I will write two moles. At this stage of the game, if you can round, like if your number is very close to a whole number, just make it a whole number. And then this one would be one mole of oxygen. And this part's done. Now all I have to do is get my empirical formula. That means that these numbers, right, 1, 2, and 1, are just the, the subscripts. So let's figure it out. Doesn't matter which one you, you know, put first, but I'll put, I'll just go from top to bottom. So I have a carbon. I have one of them. Now, when we're doing a formula, you don't really have to put a 1. You can get rid of that. But for the second one, I have a hydrogen, and I have two of them. So I have to put the two there. And then I have only one oxygen, so I just put one oxygen. And that is your empirical formula for a percent composition of 40% carbon, 6.7% hydrogen, and 53.3% oxygen. And that's it. Guys, what'd you think? Let me know in the comments. Give this video a like. 
uh, just gets the feedback back to me uh, just to make sure that I'm teaching you in the best way that I can. All right, I hope this really helps. Empirical formulas are a little bit more challenging for students, but I got you guys and I, and I hope I'm helping you guys out. Love talking to you guys. You guys rock. Um, if you want to subscribe, that would be cool too. Thank you so much for that. And I will see you all in the next lesson. Have a great day. Keep studying hard. Bye.